Let's take a look at Scorpio. And that's where we started last week as far as Scorpio was concerned. And just for a mini review, we were, we were showing you Scorpio as the conflict where Scorpio, the scorpion, is endeavoring to sting the heel of the man who is struggling with the serpent, you know. And, uh, of course, it's all part of what we've been looking at, how the stars speak to us. The stars speaking to us long before the Bible ever did. It's an amazing thing, and as we cover this week after week, it's, it's amazing to me that Christianity, especially, is so afraid of it. Oh, my goodness, the stars. Oh, the zodiac. And yet, if you look right on the very first page of the Bible, in Genesis 1.14, it says, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs. Let them be for signs. Well, what signs? What do they mean? How are we ever going to find out what are these signs unless we look at them? They asked Jesus for a sign. How will we know? What will we do? Where will we go? He said, when you see the man carrying the pitcher of water enter into the house, when you see that Aquarian age, the advent of the Aquarian Age, enter within yourself. Go to the upper room, which is into the higher realms of consciousness, and I'll meet you there. And so we covered this conflict that Scorpio represents, the wounding of the man, and of course, that which was the center of Scorpio. If you look at the center of Scorpio, you know what, Ethel, maybe, do you have one of these? Maybe you could be the television um, chart person, and if you could show them on television, the chart, but for those of you here, if you look at the center of Scorpio, there is a very bright star called Antares, A-N-T-A-R-E-S, and that's the heart. That is, that's the heart of the scorpion, you know, and that is the, uh, that's the place where the wounding takes place within that part of, of the scorpion, and it's a, it's a very bright red star that, that, that glows. Now, when we talk about a constellation, in each constellation there are what they call a decon, D-E-C-A-N. There's three decons in each constellation, and there's 10 degrees in each decon, making up 30 degrees. And of course, there's 12 constellations, and 12 times 30 is 360, so you have your 360 degrees of the zodiac. So there are three decons in each constellation, and we look at the three decons, if you'll open your page, you'll see there are two decons in the very next page. One is Serpens the Serpent, and the other Ophiuchus the Serpent Holder. That's decon one and two in Scorpio. And then the third decon is one, a guy you're pretty well familiar with, the name Hercules. Okay, Hercules. But let's look at Serpens and Ophiuchus. The serpent is struggling against the man. Can you see that? Look at him struggling with the serpent. The interesting part, sure, the interesting part is that as you look at this, this is in the sky. You know, who drew the, did, you, did you, ever, you ever get those little children's books when you were a kid and you had to connect the dots? Who connected the dots and made all of these pictures up there that have been up there for you know, millions of years? Uh, the serpent and Ophiuchus struggling. And, and as you look at that picture, I'd like you to open in the Bible to page 450 in the Old Testament. You go to the book of Job. I want to show you something interesting. Book of Job, for the rest of you, it's right before the book of Psalms. And we'll go to Job chapter 26. Okay? For those of you who have the little Bible here, it's on page 450 in the Old Testament. Okay? Job chapter 26. And let's go down to verse 13. And here's the statement about the picture. Now, take a look at your picture as you can see it. The serpent, and here's open. Look at that serpent, how, you know, the crooked serpent there, okay? And what's it say in Job 26, verse 13? By his spirit, he has garnished the heavens. Ah, the stars in the heaven. His hand formed what? The crooked serpent. You see it? It says, I mean, how can, I mean, You've got to tell your friends to go to church, you know, in these churches on the street with all of the stained glass. I think sometimes they put the stained glass in there so they don't have to look outside to see what's going on. You've got to look. It says here that by his 
spirit, he garnished the heavens. In other words, it's saying that the creator put these things in the heavens. And his hand formed the crooked serpent. And as you look at the serpent, with Ophiochus wrestling with the serpent, but look what it says in the very next verse. Lo, these are part of his ways. They're signs. There's ways that, that, that the Creator has given us to understand things, understand life by looking at the stars, by looking at these signs. But look what it says. But how little a portion is heard of him. You know? How many understand this? I mean, you've got to, come on, you've been coming to church, going to one church or another all of your life. Who ever told you about Opiotus and the serpent? Never heard about it. Never heard about it. And yet here's the Bible written in the stars long before it was ever placed on a piece of paper. Ophiochus and the serpent. How little a portion is heard of him. Now you take a look at that again. You can even sit right there in your chair and just hold it over. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can just hold it right down. And, and he can. Looking at that man wrestling with the serpent, you're looking at you. You're looking at me. You see, a lot of the, see that serpent represents the part that just comes and grabs and holds onto you and strangles you and comes at you from all directions. It circles around you and will just pull you down into the abyss of, of thought, depression, hurt, fear, anger, etc. But look at something. I, I don't know how many people have told me, you know, you've got to be very careful because you can lead people into awful things because you're telling them to meditate and separate from the thoughts and open their minds, and they can open their minds to devils and demons and all of this kind of thing. Go to page 69 in your little Bible. For the rest of you, go to the book of Luke. Okay? The book of Luke, chapter 10. The book of Luke, chapter 10. Okay? Luke, chapter 10, page 69 in your little Bible. And at verse 19, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, what does it say? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Here's Scorpio. Here's our, here's our constellation that we're studying now. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The only thing that can hurt you is the fear that is created in your head from religion. Other than that, once you're willing to stand with Christ and walk away from religion and trust, place your entire trust in the Creator, the Creator, the God who dwells within you, then you have the power to tread on the serpent. You have the power to take up the serpent and to tread on the scorpions. And nothing by any means can hurt you. Because what, what, is, there in, what is there in the universe that can, that can in any way afflict that which comes from the right side? Nothing. It's the power of the Creator, Almighty God. Look at that picture. See that? I want you to look at it very carefully. Here he is. Of course, if you were to get into Christian circles, you've got the man who is treading on the scorpion, and you can go back to Genesis 3.15. You don't have to turn there now. But it says, The woman's seed shall bruise your head, and you, excuse me, the, you shall bruise his heel, and he shall bruise your head. That's in Genesis 3.15. Talking about the deliverer. Talking about he who will wrestle with the, with the serpent. And of course, each one of us immediately thinks of Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you a strange picture. This, this picture comes from a, a point many, many years before Jesus Christ was born. Look at that again. Look at the man, serpents and opiochus. Look at that man wrestling with the, the serpent. Okay, and now, Ethel, if you would, you uh, distribute these out. Take a close look at that. And take a close look at the picture that I'm about to show you. And begin to understand the universality of this. Begin to see, maybe if we could... Al, could you on this side? And that would cut down the amount of time. <coughs> okay. What you're looking at here, and as each one of you, each one of you get it, okay, and as the folks on television see it, there's a picture of Hare Krishna wrestling with the serpent. And look, and, and not only that, but look where Hare Krishna's foot is. On the head of the serpent. See? He shall bruise your heel, you shall bruise his head. Of course, that's a prophecy of Jesus Christ. But what, how did Harvey get his picture in here? Huh? 
Now there's a picture that is from a drawing that's thousands of years before the time of Jesus Christ. Krishna and the serpent. And there is Hare Krishna wrestling with the crooked serpent. And he has his foot on the serpent's head. Do you see it? And you've never seen it before. Never even knew that this picture existed before. So, it may, if, as you see this, begin to give you the understanding of the Jesus, the Christ, and the Krishna, and all of this, who is one and the same person, who wrestled with that which was the enemy, who crushes the head of that which is the enemy. And then maybe we'll be a little more receptive when people come around and Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari, 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 and say, hey, you know, maybe they're not so bad after all. It seems that it's what it, we don't know that, that hurts it. But I, I was really struck by that because as we look at this picture of Ophiocha's wrestling with the serpent, and then take a look at this picture of Hare Krishna wrestling with the serpent, and look at the Genesis 3.15 in which it says, you shall bruise his heel, but he shall bruise your head. And there you see Hare Krishna with his foot on top of the serpent's head. The universality of this myth doesn't mean it's not true. It means it's a symbol of something spiritual. We've distorted the word myth. I mean, oh, that's a myth, meaning it's not true. That's not what the word myth means. Myth means it's a symbolic story that has a deep spiritual meaning. When you read a myth, it's very true. You just have to get through the symbolic language to understand what it means. <clears throat> so here, now, tonight, as you come in here, you have two things going. First of all, you saw the constellation Ophiochus, the serpent holder, and you saw Hare Krishna, the serpent holder. So what do you do with that? You look at it and you say, my God, there is a oneness as Jesus Christ himself prayed. Father, I pray they may all be one, that we, we learn the oneness, the universality of all of this. If it's in the stars, it's not because you're a Christian or you're a, a, a Muslim or you're a Buddhist or whatever you are. It is because you are. You are one with all things. And you see what's going on today over in Iraq. People are choosing sides. Well, you know, our side is going to win, and we want our boys to come home safe. And we never think of their boys. But you can't do that once you're with God. Once you're with God, you have to put that down. And you have to think of boys and girls. We don't want anybody to get killed. We don't want anybody to get hurt. We don't want any of the animals to be hurt. We don't want the trees to be hurt because of cannons firing or tanks marauding. So we want peace. And so that comes from the universality of this same Godhead who brings peace and love and turns the wars or uh, tools of war into... What is it? Pruning hooks and plow, whatever it is. But look, I'm going to show you something. When you look at, of course, you see Hare Krishna, and you look at Ophiochus, the great constellation, let me show you what happens when you take these things literally and don't understand the meaning of the serpent. You don't understand the meaning. If you look in your Bible, on page 53 of the New Testament, go to the book of Mark. Mark. 16. And I know I've got some of you folks down there in Kentucky, and I'm sure you could, if you were here, you could stand up and, as they say, testify to this. But in Mark 16, verse 18, it says, they shall take up serpents. You know, they're, they're, they'll lift up serpents and nothing will happen to you. They shall take up serpents. That means the Christ consciousness will be your power to overwhelm the lower serpent. In other words, that means through your meditation, as the kundalini power rises within you and starts to drive away all the terror of the thoughts of the lower mind, you are able to take on that which comes against you and overwhelm it. You are able to crush out that which comes up from within your lower to try to drag you down, to try to bite at you, to try to surround you and choke the life out of you, and you are able to overpower that because of the power that comes from the higher side, from the right side. But do you know that there are people in churches in some parts of this country who actually bring in snakes and pick them up? Is that for me? Is it? Do you know that? There are people who actually take... In fact, as I said, some of you folks that live in Kentucky, that happen. People go into churches and pick up snakes. And every so often, about two a year are killed. Because a poisonous snake will bite you and it'll kill you. And so, if you don't understand what taking up the serpent means, you're going to pick up a real serpent, it's going to bite you, and you're going to die. And the Apostle Paul says, be not a minister of the letter, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So here's a picture of Hare Krishna taking up the serpent. There's a picture of Ophiochus in the sky taking up the serpent. You can go to any 
uh, planetarium and see it. He's taking up the serpent. But it does not mean that you pick up a live serpent. It means that you are able to have power over that, which is the serpent who is the lower mind reaching up within you to pull you down and to, to destroy you and to sting you and to hurt you and to crush you. So here in the conflict of Scorpio, the struggle is against the lower forces by the son of man. And the son of man is simply the offspring of the human mind. And we all are that. But the son of man has a capability of becoming son of God by allowing that power to rise. Incidentally, for those of you who are within shooting distance of this place, I shouldn't use that word, within... Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, let's change that. Who are within walking distance, arriving distance? Sunday nights, we're getting to the end of Book of Revelation. We're down to the last two chapters, and it's really an amazing thing. Um, I was studying some of it today, and we are getting to the point where we actually enter the human skull. Do you know what I said? We actually enter the human skull, because that's what the Book of Revelation is about. The Book of Revelation is about the marriage of the Lamb, the ultimate consummation, the marriage of the Lamb, the Lamb being the pineal gland of the brain, the bride being the pituitary gland of the brain. And when the chrism of the holy oil rises through the bride, she then becomes married to the Lamb, the pineal gland, in the right hemisphere lights. <whistles> What's wrong with that? Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful that this is built within your body and you simply, by obeying Jesus Christ, can lift this energy upward and the holy oil in your lamp can flow and as the bride the pituitary takes the oil to the lamb the pineal there is light well anyhow that's uh, that's on Sunday night so I, we can't do it tonight well you see if, as you look back at Scorpio and serpents and opioches you see the the scorpions effort to wound the heel to sting the heel. Why the heel? Remember we told you? That heel is the lowest part of you and me. And the lowest part of you and me is our carnal mind. See? The part that touches the carnal mind is the part that gets stung. But there's something far more important uh, taking place here. And that's why I want you to use this. Okay? It's not just a question of stinging the heel, the scorpion stinging the heel. The struggle against the serpent is to stop the serpent from his goal. We showed you the picture of Hare Krishna holding the serpent. We show you the picture here that is of the constellation, uh, the Deacon Opiochus holding the serpent. What's he holding the serpent? What is he trying to deprive the serpent of? Now, if you pick up this picture here of the zodiac, and if you will look at K. 24. Do you see K24? There's Ophiochus. Do you see him struggling with the serpent? Now look at the serpent's head. Follow that right up. What is the serpent reaching for? The corona borealis, the crown. Ah, that's what the struggle is about. You see, the serpent is reaching up to take your mind. The serpent is reaching up to take your mind. And that's, you see right in that picture, the serpent reaching up to the corona borealis, which is the crown. Is that right? Let me just take a look at that, okay? Is that right? Krishna is wearing, yeah, he is, yes. Krishna is wearing a crown in that picture. Good, good job there, Elliot. I didn't even see that, okay? And so the crown is a symbol of your higher divine mind, and it is the serpent or the lower mind who would reach up and deprive you of that which we in the West call the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. See? But isn't it wonderful to look at it and look at the drama in the stars? You look out in your backyard, you never knew all that was going on up there. You never knew there was a guy wrestling with a serpent and the serpent was reaching up to try to snare the crown. All of that you read in the Bible was written in those stars millions of years before they even invented paper to write a Bible with. Isn't that wonderful? See? Isn't that beautiful? That's great. And I like that part. That Krishna is wearing a crown, but look at when you look at Krishna, he is wearing the crown, but the head of the serpent is firmly under his foot. That serpent is not going to raise himself up to get that crown, meaning those negative, horrible thoughts that come out of the lower depths of your mind are not going to be able to raise themselves up to take away your victory and your new life and your peace and your love and your healing. That's sensational stuff, I'm telling you. In the serpent... See the serpent again with Ophiochus? 
the brightest star in the serpent is called Unuk. U N U K. You see that one? U N U K, and it means encompassing. Encompassing, which means you're surrounded. That your troubles come at you from all directions. You don't know which way to turn. They're all over you. You know what I mean? No matter, no matter what you try to do, you're getting hit from one side or the other by a negative thought or by a fear or by an anxiety or something, and you're just surrounded. It, it is just like that, you know? It's like a serpent coiling around you, just hang, holding on to you. You can't move, you can't turn. And that's what that means, encompassing, eunuch. U-N-U-K. Now let's take a look at the third decon in Scorpio. Boy, we, we got a lot of stuff already, didn't we? We pretty good stuff. Huh? I'm telling you. The third decon in Scorpio is Hercules, the mighty one, right? You ever see that down at the beach? You know, who do you think you are? Hercules, you know? Hercules, the mighty one. Now, as we look at Hercules, what do you notice? First off, you should notice something. In the right hand is the club. In the same as Orion, remember? In the right hand is the club, and that signifies the power that comes from the right side. The power that comes from the right side. That's why Jesus said, if you want to catch fish, cast your net to the right side. You know, I saw something. I was up around the circle by near Point Pleasant today, and I saw... Uh, an ad for Baker's Lobster Shanty or one of those things. And it says up there, fish is brain food. What did Jesus say? If you want to catch fish, in other words, you want to have wisdom and intelligence, cast your net to the right side. And you cast your net to the right side through meditation. See? But the power then is in the right side. That's why in 1 Kings 6, 8, when they're constructing the temple, this is the temple. If you, figure, if you feel the right side of your head or the left side, you get a little dent in the side of your head. That's supposed to be there, Mary of Young God, even though it's dented. There's a little dent there, and that's called the temple. And Jesus drove the money changers out of the temple. That's right. That's what it is. It's exactly. It's driving the thoughts out of your head through meditation. So here in Hercules, the power is in his right hand. Now look at his left hand. There's a three-headed monster. Woo! The three-headed monster. And that three-headed monster is a star called Cerebus. C-E-R-E-B-U-S. Okay, that's the three-headed monster. And that symbolizes three things. Power, lust an insatiable desire. That's what that three-headed monster is. And how did the Apostle Paul said to overcome? What was his three-headed divine realm? He said, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, now abides faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity. So those three overwhelm that three. You know, that, it, it's about, just to write like a song or something, they change. You know, they said, now abides faith, hope, and love. It doesn't. It's not faith, hope, and love. It's faith, hope, and charity. But, nonetheless. Hercules, look at Hercules. Anyhow. He's about to kill power, lust, and desire with the right hand. Why? So he can eat of the fruit of the vine in his left. You see that? He can't take of the fruit. He can't eat the fruit that is in his left hand. You can't take that which is the fruit of the left hemisphere of your brain because it is poisoned by he who is the three-headed monster. Lust, power, and desire. Say that? So that has to be killed. So how do you kill power, lust, and desire? You kill with the weapon that comes from the right side. Huh? See? Isn't that great that the Bible's written in the stars? Isn't that beautiful? See, if you see what's being shown here, look at, you'll see that on the left side there's very pretty leaves in his. You see all the leaves on that little vine? But the fruit is evil, and it's got to be destroyed by the power from the right side. Do you remember Jesus? Jesus came up to the fig tree. He looked at the fig tree, and he says, you're not going to produce fruit anymore. And he killed it. Now, we went through that a few weeks ago. Jesus did not hurt anybody. That's a symbolic story. 
But the fig tree is the tree that grows within us. And the fig tree should produce fruit. And the reason that fig is a holy fruit or a spiritual fruit is because it blossoms on the inside. If you cut a fig open, the blossoms are on the inside. But here Jesus was saying the tree inside of you just has leaves and it looks like it's tuned in. It looks like it's going to produce fruit, but there'll never be any fruit growing. And if the fruit does grow on it, it'll make you sick. And that's the fruit we've been eating from. So Jesus kills that tree so it can die and the tree of life can grow within there. And then we can take of the fruit that is righteousness and peace and love and healing and all the rest of it. So here then, the, the, the leaves on that tree in, in Hercules' left hand look very nice, but that three-headed serpent of power, lust, and desire is there, so he dare not eat the fruit there. And that fruit is the stuff that has told you all of your life how miserable you are. It's told you all your life what a sinner you are. It's told you all your life you're guilty of this, you're guilty of that, you're guilty of the other thing. Actually, that's the tree of religion he's holding in the left hand. It's everything that comes out of the carnal mind. It's everything that comes out of emotionalism. And it's everything that has made people fearful. It's the reason people are on drugs, because they've been eating from that fruit. In other words, they've been taking the thoughts of the left side of the mind. They never knew about the power on the right side to destroy the serpent so that tree could be wholesome and healthy and good and clean and produce righteous fruit. They never knew about it. So they, we've been eating it. And then lately myself, you know, I got a little bit tired and be doing a lot of stuff. And last week I ate some fruit from the left side. I mean, I, and you, you could tense it. I mean, I knew it. You know, this thing with the television, I was, I was ready to kick it in, give it up. You know, what do I have to do? What's going on here? Because I was eating from that tree on the left side. I was taking the thoughts from the left side of the brain. I was taking the thoughts from the carnal mind. And it's poison. And you cannot take from that side because you've got to use that power of the right side as Hercules to destroy that three-headed serpent of power, lust, and desire because the desire was that everybody in the state of New Jersey called as soon as that program was over. I mean, they had to because we were on 11.30 Saturday night and that didn't work. We were on 7 o'clock Saturday night. That didn't work too good. We got a lot of nice calls and everything. But everybody's head Tuesday at 7. Wow, everybody's home. Phone's going to ring off the hook. As soon as I said goodnight, I stared at the phone. <laughs> and the phone was taking no thought. <laughs> there wasn't even a ding-dong on that thing. Not even a ding-a-ling on that. Nothing. Not even one thing. And I stared at the phone and I said, Go ahead. Nothing. Nothing. The silence of that phone. And my left side started to tell me, It's over. Nobody wants to hear this. Maybe this is wrong. You know, all of these things. And I didn't have the club on the right side to wield against it. And you see what I, what I was going through? Look, look at the picture of Hercules. Do you see which was coming against me in last week? When, look at those three serpents sticking their tongues out. That's what I was up against. And I did not take from the right side. I did not pick up the club, the power of the right side, to destroy that so I could feed on the left side. <sighs> Boy, I'm telling you. Now, if you notice something else, I want to show you something. Boy, I'm telling you, don't you, do you understand? Do you know what the heck I'm talking about out there? Do you understand That's my job. That, yeah, that the Bible, the Bible was written in the stars before it was written in a book? I mean, I want to show you something here. Take a look at old Hercules. Do you see what he's got on his head and around his body? It's the skin of a lion. That is the skin of a lion. He's wearing the lion skin. He's wearing the flesh. But the spirit of that lion is dead. Don't you see? You're a human being. You're wearing the flesh. But the roaring, lustful part of that lion who wrongs as your adversary is dead. You may be wearing his skin, but his heart has stopped. And now you'll beat with the heart of God. Do you see it? Huh. If you open on your Bible to page 217 in the New Testament and you go to 1 Peter and uh, it's easy to find because it's right before 2 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 Be sober, be vigilant 
because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Don't you see what's happened? Because the power is in the right side, Hercules is about to destroy that which is poisoning the fruit of his tree, and he is wearing the skin of the lion. In other words, you walk around in the flesh, but the lion's heart is dead because the heart of God beats within the renewed mind. It's all there, my friends. It's all written in the stars. And that's why it says in Psalm 147, he gave all the stars their names. That's why he called them the serpent and all of this business. That's why Hercules, it's all up there. Millions of years ago, you see? I mean, you know, there's a people in Christianity who believe the world was created 6,000 years ago. It's bizarre, but they do. Millions of years ago, the Bible was in the stars. And what do you know? Little Hare Krishna got there first. And he was holding up the, about 5,000 years before Jesus was born. Hari was, uh, was that Harry or Hari? Whatever. He was holding up the serpent. Can you imagine this? Don't tell the guys down the street with those stained glass because... But that's not why, you know. It's so beautiful to be understanding of that and be a part of that. My God, it's beautiful. So in Scorpio, we have the conflict with the serpent and the scorpion and it's going on within you and the mighty one the divine mind the power from the right side slays the roaring lion even though you're still wearing the flesh see this is what's the good you know what this is christianity teaches you you got to die and go to heaven what does hercules say baloney wear the flesh and touch the power from the right side because you're in the flesh you're alive you're a physical human being but the lion is dead So we have in Hercules again that, uh, that warning, you know, to the serpent, you know, it's going to bruise your head. He destroys the serpent who poisons the fruit that comes from the lower tree. The brightest star is in the head of Hercules. It's called Ras al Gethi. Do I have to write that? I don't think so. Oh, why not? Maybe somebody's interested. I don't know why you would be interested in that, but anyhow. Ras, R A S al Gethi. Arabic names and, and what that means is the head of him who bruises that's what it means but I want to show you this one you're gonna like this one look at his right shoulder Hercules right shoulder there is a star there called K O R N E P H O R U S do you see that let's write that down would you what how do you spell that K O R N E P H U S. Oh, come on, folks. P H O R U S? Okay. Now, see that? See that? Yeah. See that in his right shoulder? You know what that star means when you translate that word, chronopopheus, whatever it is? A branch. Branch. And in every constellation that we have studied, what have we gone through? Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, the brightness star. There is a star called the branch. And each one, it goes, oh, that means Jesus, because it says in the Bible, behold, he who is called the branch. So we say, that must be Jesus. The branch, Jesus. But when Jesus got here, the wonderful Savior that he is, he turned and said, whoa, wait a minute, I'm the vine, you're the branch. In every constellation, there's a bright star, and it's you. You. Your, your star is up in every constellation, the branch. So Hercules is you. Humble, yet filled with power from the right side to destroy the ravenous lion and to destroy the serpent who poisons the fruit of the tree of knowledge and the tree of life. And there's something else to see. Take up your star pictures, would you? If you take up your star pictures, and uh, if you look at K... No, it's between, about K-20. See Hercules upside down? 
Huh? Now turn your page over. Where's his foot? Right on the head of the serpent. Do you see it? It shall bruise your head. But look where Hercules' foot is. And you shall bruise his heel. Hercules' foot is right smack on the head of the serpent. Isn't that interesting? So we had a, a real good excursion through the constellation Scorpio and saw some real neat things. And you know, it's one thing to read about it in a book. It's another thing when you know that it's in the stars. Uh, you, can, you can go and read the Bible in a planetarium. You just learn what the ancient Arabic uh, words mean. Uh, I will bring you, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because I kept you tonight, but I will bring you, uh, maybe you can hand these out. I hate to disturb you, Al, but I mean, you know, what the heck, that's what you get paid for. <laughs> uh, we're going to move uh, next week into covering the next constellation, which is Sagittarius. Sagittarius. And uh, that will be next week. And while this is going on, I remind you folks out there once again, you know, uh, I hate to, I'm, I'm the world's worst for this, but if you can help us, um, we send out a monthly envelope. And all you have to do is call and say, send me the envelope. And each month we'll send you an envelope with a hidden meanings teaching in it. And you can put in whatever you can. And maybe this month you can't, but maybe the next month you can. And it helps to buy the tapes and do all this television work. Uh, you know, what we're doing in, in New Jersey and in New York, we have uh, television in both of those uh, uh, states. But we, don't, we do not uh, give them the services that you get here. You can write to church with us. So we kind of look at you as a member uh, of this church, although we don't really have members, per se, but somebody who comes here. So you might think about that. Uh, just before we close for this particular portion, um, if you look at Sagittarius, let's see, Ethel, could you I sit down? Um, in Sagittarius, you have, first of all, Sagittarius, which is the constellation, and then you have the three deacons, which are Lyra, the harp, okay? Ara, the altar, and the final one is Draco, the dragon cast down. Okay. There's one thing I, I will share with you and uh, let you ponder it as we go tonight. Uh, if you look at the altar, Ara, okay, notice that the fire is pointing downwards. That's very critical. Biblically, it's very critical. The fire is pointing downwards. That's Armageddon. That's the fire of the spirit that comes down from your higher mind to destroy all of the hurt that comes against you from the lower man. Very important that that altar fire is not pointing upwards, it's pointing downwards. Okay? And it symbolizes the Holy Spirit, the higher mind, that which comes down to destroy the, the negative thoughts that come against us. Well, we've just about wrapped it up here. 